Let's put what we learnt in the donut chart video into practice. So we're going to try to recreate this fitness app display um, on the Apple Watch. And let's see if we can recreate these rings. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to zoom out for a bit. Um, I'm just going to make six rectangles. So I'm just holding Option, click, drag. And to copy, you can just go Command-D to repeat that action six times. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can collect these colors. So using the eyedropper tool, it's the shortcut I. I can just quickly select these colors really quick, just like that, ready to be used later. So we're going to start with our outer ring. We're going to make it 200 by 200. So I'm just holding down Shift to constrain it to a perfect circle. And to help us with the math, I'm just going to put a black rectangle at the back. So center back is also the left square bracket. So I drop a tool. I'm just going to click on this black. There we have it. So for the outer ring, we want to make it 20. So with a 200 by 200 circle, half of the circle is 100. So with 20, we essentially have to cut out 80. So let's activate our arc tools first. So I'm just going to open it and close it. So we got 80 is what we want to cut out out of 100 times 100%. There's our ring. And to check, we can just draw a 20 by 20 square. We'll make it this color for now. So we can just see. I'm going to zoom in. So you can see now it's a 20 ring. To get that gradient color, we can just use in the fill tools rather than using solid, we can use angular. So for the left side, we're just going to click this color. And for the right, we're going to click the other color. Awesome. And just to flip it, because it's on the wrong side, we just flip it like that. And now we want to make this circle. And the reason we want a circle is so we can create that shadow. So we can just use an ellipse tool. And because we know it's 20 by 20. Oops, it's going to let me do it. No, OK, I'm going to do it up here, 20. We're going to just make sure we get that color. So that's this color. And we're going to add a drop shadow. So we want it from the center. So we want the Y to be 0. Maybe the spread can be 4. And let's make it just a bit darker. Maybe that spreads too much. Maybe it should be two. That's good. And now we're just going to drag it and try to find the right spot at the bottom. Awesome. OK, so now that does not look like that. So what have we done wrong here? Well, it's nothing we've done wrong. We need to work a way to show one half of the circle, but hide the other half. So what a trick that we can do is we can actually cut this ring in half so that the circle can be above this half of the ring, but below the right half. So using this bread, which is the sweep, we can just go 50%. And instead of working out the angle for the start, we can just click and drag like that. Now I'm going to copy and paste it with Command C, Command V. And then I'm just going to control the pasted version and just swing it around here. So we still have our consistent gradient, but now broken in parts. And now we can just bring the right side to the front. So it's the right square bracket. Bring to front. There we have our first ring. So now our second ring, we want to copy and paste this ring. So Command C, Command V. And we can just shrink it with these control handles holding down Option to shrink it from the center, and also holding down Shift to constrain the shrink to retain the circle shape. I'm going to make it 160, right? And now let's just fill up the circle for now. So we've got to make this 20 again, because by shrinking it, you actually shrink um, how much you retain, because it's a percentage that you cut out. So we know it's 160 by 160. 
that means this half is 80 and we want to leave 20. So what does that mean? So if we have 80 and we want to leave 20, we've got to cut out 60. So instead of doing the math, we can just type in the equation here. So we want to leave 60, we have 80, and we want a percentage of times 100%. There we have it. And now we can zoom out for a bit. If you're wondering how I'm zooming out, I'm just holding down command and scrolling with my mouse. So we're going to use the next set of colors. So this yellow and this green. And we want to add this black border. It has a one pixel black border, which is not necessarily correct because it means we've only left with 18 pixels of green when we have 20 pixels of red. But I think it's okay for this workaround. Um, yes, I can probably do the math to work it out to make it super perfect, but it's a bit too much effort for right now. So what we need to do is for the sweep, we don't need the full sweep, so we can just reduce it. And for the starting point, we can just bring it back. And it's about there. And for the corner radius, we can just make it 50. doesn't really matter as long as it covers most of it. Okay, that's awesome. And now we've got to make our final internal ring. So I'm just going to click on this one. Same thing, copy and paste, Command-C, Command-V. I'm going to shrink in the middle, holding down Option and Shift. So we want to get it to 120. And now we've got to make this 20 again. So let me just close it up so it's just easier. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke. So it's 120, which means there's 60 here. So if we want to leave 20, it means we got to get rid of 40. So doing the math again. So we want to keep 40 out of 60. And we want a percent. So times 100%. There we have it. Um, let's change the colors again. So let's go. I drop the tool, this color, and then this color. So the easiest way, rather than doing it at this weird angle, is sort of recreating what we did on the outer ring and then rotating the whole shape. So let's move this to the top. Cool. And then now we got to create this shadow effect, which is pretty much what we did over here. So I can just copy this circle. So I'm holding Command, click drag to copy and paste. Um, you can use the right square bracket to bring to front. And using the eyedropper tool, which is shortcut I, I can click on this color. And pretty much, I've got to just repeat the same process. If I split the sweep in half by 50%, we can just move the start point to the top. So it's now minus 90. And we'll make the corners radius 0 because we don't need the radius. And now I just get the other half. So Command-C, Command-V. Drag the start to the other side. And there we have it. So I need to bring this to the front. So that's the right square bracket. Or bring to front. There we go. As you can see, the things we need to fix is this shadow is sticking out on top of this green. So we can just bring this one to the front. So the right square bracket. And also our angular gradient of the green is at the bottom, which is not what we want. We don't, we just want a smooth transition. So we just click on the green and with the angular selected, we can just move the line into this gap where you can't see it. Awesome. And now with the blue, if we click on these three, we can just, so not on the control handle, but outside. You have the rotate tool. You can just rotate it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now we want to make these arrows. Well, let me just pull out this black fill so it looks like we're closer. So these arrows, I would use the pen tool. And instead of making that weird angle shape, I would just do it like this. So just holding shift to make sure you're drawing straight lines done we can make it let's say 150 
So tabbing to the next field by 150, enter. Um, maybe it needs to be a bit thicker. We can just make it 40. Oh, I'm scared that might be too thick, maybe 30. And then we can just rotate this. And now we need a line in the middle. So instead of using the pen tool, which is good for multiple lines, you can just go line shortcut L and just go click or click and drag, sorry, and hold shift to constrain it. And we can also make this 150. Let's see what that looks like. So we made this 30. So we make this stroke thickness 30 as well. Cool. Is that right? No, let's make it a bit longer. Let's make it 180. All right. So now we can use these align tools. Align horizontal centers. This is the weird thing about stroke. It just does that for some reason. So the way to work around this is we can convert this stroke into a rectangular shape. Same with this stroke. So you can go right click outline stroke and the shortcut is shift command O. I'm just going to do that for both of them. So now when I do the align horizontal centers, wait, I didn't do this one. Sorry. Yeah. Let's try again. There we have it. I'm just going to bring it up in there. It doesn't really matter where it is. And we can also do corner radiuses because these are now shapes. These points can all have this corner radius applied. So let's just go 30. That's pretty good. So we have one facing right, then two facing right, and then one facing up. So we're just going to copy and paste this by going option drag up. That's cool. And then we can join them all together using the union selection tool, which is part of Boolean groups. So union selection, and now it's just all one shape. Okay. Then we need to make it smaller. So I'm just holding shift to constrain it proportionally, all right, to make it smaller. And we can zoom in and you can see what happened. My radius has tried to retain itself. So when I double click into edit, editing, editing the group, you can see this point, it's trying to retain that 30 radius that we've put up here, which is not necessarily what we want. So I'm just going to go command Z to undo. So to push this radius into the shape, we can do the same trick, outline stroke. So now when we shrink it, holding down shift, it thinks the radius is zero, even though there has that radius that we applied previously, but that's okay. So we can put it here. Let's make it a bit bigger like that. So what do we have? Right, right, right up. So we can rotate this. Oh, actually let's do this one first. So right, right, right up. So now I'm gonna option click drag to copy, make this up, enter. And essentially we, we just wanna get rid of this part. So we can go here, edit object, or you can just double click to get into it. And essentially you just want to select these points and delete them to get rid of them. We can go down at the top here, at the top left. So now we can center this one and final one, option click drag. And there we have it. Hopefully that was useful for you in learning how to apply the things we've learned from the donut chart video in creating this display. And hopefully you can find new ways to apply this technique to improve the data vis visualization of your projects. That's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.